we're back out on the bass buggy, and today we're talking about why, when it comes to bass fishing, it's always best to go with the flow. Stick around. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And you know, on this channel we try to keep things simple and easy. We try to keep them cheap. We try to make it where anyone who can fish, regardless of what their budget is. Because, as we've often said, you don't need to be rich to fish. Which is why I do these videos. I try to illustrate that anyone can do it. You don't need to have $25 baits, and you don't need to have two and $300 rods and reels to be able to fish. Now to that point, a lot of the videos that I do are along those lines. Simple tricks and tips that you can do that don't cost anything. And the past couple of videos have really been some important ones. The last video we did, for example, on covering water is probably one of the biggest things that any angler can do when it comes to catching fish. Now, let's move on to the second part of that. Okay, you've learned that you need to cover water. So, how do I even figure out where I'm going to cast in the first place? When it comes to something like that, it's always best to follow the current. When it comes to figuring out where those elusive bass are hiding out, you don't need fancy electronics when you're fishing from the bank. Although it does help on the boat, especially offshore, one of the easiest things that you can do, and one of the things that the pros know to do, is to follow that current. You follow the current, you're going to find the bass. It's just that simple. Now we've all heard it said a thousand times that the wind and the current push those bait fish up into pockets and that's where the bass go. And that's partially true. See, the wind and the current aren't pushing the little bait fish, but they are pushing the phytoplankton, those microscopic organisms that the small minnows and the shad and even the small bluegill, that's what they're feeding on. The larger bait fish are feeding on them, and then the bass is feeding on everyone else. So, the bass, being at the king of the heap, are feeding on everyone. That's why current is so important. It brings those microscopic organisms, like the phytoplankton, all around the water. And as those bait fish are chasing the phytoplankton, the bass are chasing the bait fish. That is why it is so paramount to understand how current affects bass behavior. Whenever you're first out on the water and you see that the current is flowing across in a certain direction, follow it. See where it leads. And more often than not, you'll find a cut or a bend where that current has to change direction. Or there are eddies or there are pinch points. Those are the types of places that you're looking for. For example, many of you who are regular viewers to this channel will recognize this as one of my home lakes. This is the Little Lake. Now you see this right here is a natural pinch point between this peninsula and this island. Now the current often comes from right to left. It goes back into this pocket, and as a result, I can always count on this area for a few good fish. The reason being is because of that pinch point right there. Those bait fish are being trapped. In that narrow area, they don't have any place to go, and it makes the bass's job of feeding that much easier. Remember, fish that don't expend a lot of energy live to see another day and live to reproduce. So being lazy is a good evolutionary trait. Now, looking at other lakes, we can find similar pinch points. We find similar bends where the current comes and blows across. Now, looking at another lake that I fish, and you can see here there's a small creek arm that juts off. And again, the current is coming from right to left on most days. And as it cuts across the front of this creek arm, it creates eddies. Fish like to sit at the front of that creek arm and whatever that current pulls across in those eddies, they use as an opportunity to get a good meal. So as you can see, you're beginning to understand why following the current is so key. It's one of the things that we as anglers must do if we want to consistently put ourselves on bass. As I said in the last video, first and foremost is learning how to cover water. The second thing you need to learn how to do is follow that current. You follow the current, you find the bass. It is just that simple. Rarely have I been to any fishery where following the current has not led me to some nice fish. Stay down. Stay down. 
That's what we got here. Oh yeah. Ooh, come on, buddy. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. three pound bass so when you find the places where the current is interrupted such as the pockets of peninsulas or pinch points or on a, or at a saddle or some place like that those are remarkable places to fish remember the bass are going to be facing into the current for the most part if there's anything for those bass to hide out of the current from, such as standing timber or docks or laydowns or brush piles or whatever, then they'll usually set up on the down current side of those things. That makes it easier for them to come out, have a quick meal, and then duck back in. Those are the types of places that when you're fishing, you want to target first. As I've said before about locating and fishing high percentage areas. In this case is no different. Follow that current find where it's been interrupted by something such as a pocket or a pinch point or the like and look for places in there that stand out places that the bass can use as ambush points and I guarantee you will have more success when you're locating bass so there you have it one of the biggest keys when it comes to locating bass is current learning how to follow it and learning how it interacts with bass and affects their behavior is paramount to becoming a good angler. In the end, the rewards speak for themselves. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.